Hey everyone, it's Tyler the Antenna Man, and today I'm going to review this compact RCA attic slash outdoor TV antenna. It runs about $34 at Walmart, comes with a mounting pole, and claims a 70 mile range. How well does it actually work? Stay tuned to find out. If you're seeing me for the first time, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that little bell icon to receive a notification whenever I post a new video. The first thing I need to mention that I'm sure most of my subscribers are tired of hearing me say is that there's no such thing as an HD antenna. The whole HD and digital thing came from the digital transition of 2009. There was a lot of misinformation about TV signals, including the myth that you need a special antenna to pick up HD frequencies. The reality is that an antenna is an antenna. It doesn't matter if the signal is analog or digital. The HD and digital thing are just keywords antenna companies use to improve the online search results of their antennas. It also confuses people into thinking they're getting a special antenna when in reality the keyword means nothing. The same rule applies to an attic antenna. Just like the whole HD thing, there's no antenna that's specifically designed for the attic. You can place any antenna in the attic, keeping in mind that you may lose up to 30% of the signal. If you're looking for an antenna for the attic, don't look for a specific, again, attic model. Look for an antenna that's appropriate for the frequencies in your area. A large outdoor antenna will likely perform better in the attic compared to a small attic antenna. There are two main bands that TV stations broadcast on, VHF and UHF. VHF TV stations broadcast on channels 2 through 13 and typically require a longer antenna element to be picked up, while UHF TV stations broadcast on channels 14 through 36 and are better picked up with smaller antenna elements. If you look at this antenna, you'll see this long element here is designed for high VHF channels 7 through 13, and then these smaller elements here are designed for UHF channels 14 through 36. It's also important to understand that most TV stations don't necessarily broadcast in a channel number you know them as. For example, in Philadelphia, there's an NBC10, and the average person would think, oh, they broadcast on channel 10, so gotta look for the VHF on the antenna. They actually broadcast on UHF channel 28. The same can be said for most TV stations across the United States. The current digital TV standard allows them to broadcast on a different RF channel than what is shown on your TV set. To find out what channels your local TV stations are broadcasting on, go to antennaweb.org, type in your address, and click that little check mark that says the antenna will be installed 30 feet above ground level, even if it's not, and it will provide you a list of stations you can likely pick up at your location. Look at the RF channel on each station. That's the channel the stations are broadcasting on. So, for example, WBRE 28 actually broadcasts on VHF channel 11. Now, if you don't see any channels listed on antennaweb.org, don't freak out and think an antenna won't work for your area. The website tends to underestimate how many channels a person can receive with an antenna. You can also use the FCC DTV reception maps or rabbitears.info. I attach links to both in the description of my video. So now that I got some of the antenna myths out of the way, I can talk more about this specific antenna. The build quality is pretty good, made of mostly metal. The design is comparable to most other basic small directional antennas out there. While the product listing claims a 70 mile range, I do not see any antenna this small working well at that distance. Sure, there's a chance this antenna would pick up TV stations from 70 miles away, but I don't see them being that reliable. If you're 70 miles away from the broadcast towers, there's no way around it. You're going to need a large antenna for reliable reception. So besides some of the hype claims, how well does this antenna actually work? I'm going to test it out in the same location I tested out various other outdoor antennas to see how it performs. If you decide to purchase this antenna, please use one of my affiliate links in the description of this video to help support my YouTube channel. 
Here are the results from the last two antennas I tested out on my YouTube channel. From left to right, you'll see the TV station, the call letters, RF channel the TV station broadcasts on, and the results of the previous two antennas I tested out on the YouTube channel. All of these TV stations are about 42 miles away with one mountain ridge between my home and the broadcast towers. You can also see the results of various other outdoor antenna models by checking out my other videos. The signal on CBS3, which broadcasts on UHF channel 30, was higher on this antenna compared to the five-star Yagi and about the same as the DBAE. The signal on NBC10, which broadcasts on UHF channel 28, was also higher on this antenna than the five-star Yagi and about the same as the DBAE. The consistency continues with the signal on WPHL-17. It was higher on this model than the 5-star Yagi and about the same as the DBAE. The signal on Fox 29, which broadcasts on UHF Channel 31, was, as you guessed it, higher than the 5-star model and about the same as the DBAE. The signal on WHYY, which broadcasts VHF Channel 13, was a little bit lower on this antenna than the 5-star model, most likely because it has little gain on the VHF band. I do still expect this antenna to pick up VHF as long as the signals are not too weak like they are in my case. While this small RCA antenna compared similarly to the large antenna's direct DBA in my situation, I can assure you in other areas it wouldn't do as well, especially if there are a lot of trees around. The VHF gain on this antenna also is not that high, but I still see it working for many areas. For the $35 price tag, it's definitely a good deal. I'd say this antenna will work fine if you live within 40 miles of the broadcast towers without too many hills or mountains. How well it performs in the attic truly depends on your building material. I usually recommend a medium-sized antenna for an attic to help with the signal loss from the roof or sidewall. If you live in an area with several stations on the VHF band, I would honestly recommend a slightly larger antenna with more gain. Because VHF stations are notoriously underpowered. I think the FCC put the power limits way too low. This is definitely a topic for another video of mine, but just to keep it short, I've noticed many situations where a small antenna like this will be perfectly fine for the UHF stations in the market but we'll have trouble with the VHF stations like you saw in my case because they are just severely underpowered. If you're in an area with several VHF stations, you may need a slightly larger antenna. Feel free to use my YouTube channel as a resource to research antennas. I also offer antenna recommendations on my website at antennamanpa.com. I go through your unique reception situation, take a look at the signal strength on the frequencies in your area, and make a specific recommendation on what antenna, amplifier, and other equipment would work best for you based on my experience testing out nearly 50 antenna models and installing them in four TV markets. Antennas truly are not a one-size-fits-all model, and investing in an antenna recommendation from me can prevent you from wasting hundreds of dollars on antennas and other equipment not sued for your area. Whether you decide to purchase this antenna or another outdoor model, Make sure it's properly grounded if installed outside to prevent static buildup, which can attract a lightning strike. I attached a video on how to ground an antenna in the description of this video. Thanks for watching this YouTube video. A huge thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon or is a member of my YouTube channel. If my videos have helped you cut the cord and you'd like to support the channel while gaining exclusive perks, such as behind the scenes content, access to my videos ad free one day early, direct contact with me, visit patreon.com forward slash antenna man, or click the join button in this video. If you're on Facebook, you can like my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash antenna man PA. If you're not on Facebook and would like to receive email updates when I post new videos, feel free to sign up to my email list. I attach a link in the description of this video. Stay tuned to my YouTube channel for more cord cutting and antenna related videos and have an awesome day.